Come on, somebody. Open up your mind. All right. Thank you, Hallelujah. Lord. Let's get it Hallelujah. On. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, Lord. 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 Thank you. 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 Thank Amen. All right. So thank God for the testimony of persistence and thank God that uh, she's finally got a job and God's blessings for all of you and anyone else that may be looking for a job. Uh, as I said earlier, anyone else that's praying for a job or a different position, uh, promotion or whatever, that same anointing, that same grace is extended to you tonight. You can have it. It's yours. It's yours. Hallelujah. You can have it. All right. I want to just share uh, some thoughts with you, and this is going to possibly be a part one, part two type message because I want to deal with uh, divine numerology. And I'm not I don't plan on doing any like uh, numerology readings tonight or anything like that. My plan is basically just to uh, to share some insight with you, possibly next week uh, when we get together, I'll do that. And I want to show you uh, other ways to, to use your prophetic gifts, the prophetic sciences with numbers. OK, I want matter of fact, I, what I had thought about doing today, it just didn't just work out that way. I wanted to show you how to use the Bible and how to use the Strong's Concordance to prophesy. <laughs> Did you hear that? I wanted to show you how to use your Bible, the Strong's and the Strong's concordance of the Hebrew, Aramaic, and Greek words, using that to prophesy using the numbers. It is very powerful. I've done it before, and uh, there are many prophetic sciences that God has given us, and we can uh, function in them. My God, looks like I see. Do I see Khalid from Pakistan on tonight? Looks like I see my brother, my son of the Lord here. <laughs> It's from Pakistan on. I might have to bring him out to let him say something. Okay, can you unmute yourself, Khalid? His name is. Can you unmute yourself? Oh, you're unmuted. Can you say something? Yes. Well, maybe... Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Oh wow! Hallelujah. There you are. I haven't seen you in, yes. in some time. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Thanks, God. Good to see and, you. Is, is what time is it there in, in Pakistan? You're near. Uh, yeah. You're near. It's near six. Pakistan, right. Six a.m. Six a.m. Okay. All right. Yes. Hallelujah. Well, it's good to see you again. Yes. Yeah, same How's here. It's good to see. Yeah, family is good. Thanks God and mm -hmm. uh, greetings everyone and thanks brother for inviting me to join this class. Mm -hmm. So Excellent. I'm thankful to God, yes. Excellent. And thanks, God, especially for your prayers mm -hmm, mm -hmm. that you have been continually doing. And, yeah. and you, uh, you, can you, I, I've shared with some of the people a little bit about your ministry and what you're doing. And uh, we've sent like, you know, offerings from time to time there. And we're going to continue to do more. Tell, tell us a little bit about your ministry and what you're doing in Pakistan. Maybe even share a little bit about how we met and all that and just going so just to catch people up yes so this is uh, the god has been using yeah you know the you, you uh, with your prayers i was baptized with the holy spirit <laughs> that's right uh -huh. yes and uh, i've been uh, doing the outreach ministry specifically mm -hmm. among the hindus and uh, also the muslims mm -hmm. they come to our church they need the deliverance Mm -hmm. We prayed for them and they got delivered and yes. uh, they accepted Jesus, not only that family, but mm -hmm. after seeing them, one other family also accepted Jesus. Hallelujah. From the Hindu community. God is, this so is uh, the God is using me total among the Hindus and Muslims. Mm -hmm. This Sunday, a Muslim family also came to our church. Every Sunday I have the church, you know that. And you also do, uh, you feed and stuff like that. You guys buy a lot of rice and we're able to. Yes. Have yeah. Time. Yeah. In the church, we Interior do like, because, uh, because uh, my church is basically when we go to the villages for outreach, people who accept Christ, we bring them to our church Sunday service. 
because they come from very far different villages. Mm -hmm. Some has to travel hours mm -hmm. to come to the church. So we feed them every Sunday after the service because they have to come so far and then they have to go back. So that's why we also feed them at the church so that when they go back, they do not have to rush to cook anything, mm -hmm. or eat anything, because mostly these are the slaves mm -hmm. of the landlords and very poor people mm -hmm. who are very hungry for the word of God. Yes, they are. Wow. Yes, so thanks mm -hmm. God, especially this is with your prayers. Mm -hmm. Praise God. Well, thank you. So glad to just be a part of what you're doing there in the Hindu communities, Hindu colonies and Muslim communities there in the interior of Pakistan. A very poor area. I've been in that area and thank God that he's raised you up and using you in a very powerful way. Praise God. Amen. Amen. All right. Amen. Thank you. Praise God. Thank you. Okay. All righty. Wow. Praise God. So uh, in case you're just getting on, that was Brother Khalid from over in Pakistan. He does a lot of ministry in the interior of Pakistan, where it is very uh, uh, poor, a high level of po poverty. They do outreaches. They feed poor. They um, sometimes they just set up outside just a tent and people come and they, you know, have a rice meal and things of that sort as well as what he was just sharing. Many people are, are turning to Christ and they're, they're tearing down their shrines and various things uh, to, to look to the most high. I remember when I was there the last time, you know, I got a chance to go into a Hindu colony and it was just really amazing. Just the hunger that is there, people that are waiting uh, to hear the word of the Lord, waiting to hear some good news. And it's so easy to see miracles as he just uh, sh shared with us, the man that was healed of cancer on the legs. It's so easy when you present the, the simplicity of the gospel, not religion and a God that's love to these people. I mean, they just believe it. They says, really? Okay. You know, and you see eyes open, you see the lame walk, you see all kinds of things just happen just right away. And so thank God uh, that he's using colic in that area and um praise god all right i hope to get back over there eventually <laughs> i hope to get back there eventually i love the area i love the people all right well i want to get into this message tonight and i want to talk about uh divine numerology and i want to share some things with you and um keep in mind guys this is a master class and so uh so we're gonna move forward we're gonna move forward and uh, uh, I think I have touched on uh, numerology before. Uh, we've talked about it. And as I said tonight, my plans are not to do like readings, numer numerological readings and stuff, possibly next week, but who knows what Spirit is doing. And, uh, but uh, next week, I plan to, uh, to do more in depth and show you how to prophesy with numbers and even with numbers from, believe it or not, Strong's Concordance and Bible and other things and stuff that that like that that we use and I've used uh, uh, in time past. Now you know I I've been watching a whole lot of the uh, the things that's been happening in the world system. One of the reasons why is because I know that everything is prophetic. Everything is prophetic. Now I want to uh, just open up everybody's mic here for a moment. And those of you that can open up your mics, I want you to say everything is prophetic. 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 And so what I mean by that, everything is prophetic. Everything has a prophetic meaning. Everything, there is a message in everything that is happening. And especially when you have major events that are happening in the world and stuff, even though they are secular, even though they may be evil or whatever, you know, it is prophetic. There is a message in uh, what is taking place. And so we as watchers, we as mystics, we as prophetic people, we are always looking, we are always aware. We are always aware because we realize that the word of the Lord can come through anything and anybody. 
anything and anybody. He can use a rooster to crow. He can use a donkey, open the mouth of an ass to speak. He can use an almond rod. He told Jeremiah, he says, look, what do you see? And he says, I see an almond rod. Okay, there was a message in the almond rod. So he can use nature. Matter of fact, Solomon, he uh, he, he, uh, he 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 spoke about the, the plants, the trees, and uh, the, the flowers and the herbs and various things because he understood the, the spiritual essence of everything. And so when I say everything is prophetic, everything has a prophetic meaning, a spiritual or esoteric counterpart to it. And we that are watchers, we are looking for that. Now over the weekend, well, let's just go back to the eclipse and stuff. I was really excited about this eclipse because, uh, you know, I, I was reading and seeing what was happening and the implications of what the spirit was saying prophetically to us. And we told you that the numeric value, or we told you that the star code of this eclipse was five, 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 five. Okay. We had all those fives and I showed it in case you haven't seen the, the video, you need to watch uh, the video uh, that I did on, I think on Thursday or Friday, I can't remember now last week, it was about the eclipse, the five, five eclipse. And so, uh, and I showed you that the sun was like 14 degrees of Taurus and that the moon was 14 degrees of uh, of Scorpio and one plus four is five. OK, so we have a set of five in Taurus, a set of five we had in Scorpio. And then we had the fifth day. OK, that's the third set of fives. And then the fifth month is another set of five. And then year 23, two plus three is five. And so, you know, for me, the spirit was saying that that the star code was five, 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 twenty five. OK, that was the star code for that day, but not only for that day, but the activation code for at least, that's going to span over uh, the next six months. And uh, and so the, the base number that I'm dealing with is five, was, was five, okay? And we understood that the number five represents grace and all of that. Plus, we understood, as I said in the video, that f uh, five, 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 five is grace upon grace, grace upon grace, okay? Using scripture, biblical numerology, that is their grace upon grace. But then the next day, we see that there was a coronation ceremony taking place. And so we saw the fives and that too. I'm not going to get into that. I really, really want to, but I'm yet in the process of dissecting the coronation, you know, almost frame by frame. <laughs> <laughs> That's just the way my mind works. And I'm looking at the people that was a part of the procession, part of the, the regalia and, and the ritual and all of that, because it was very powerful, very prophetic, you know, uh, uh, things that was taking place there. OK, and so eventually I, I plan on uh, talking about those things. But before we get in further, I just want to show you this, that uh, the queen uh, her funeral was on September the 19th of last year, 2022. Y'all remember that, you know, uh, we have been telling you, I had been prophesying that she was going to go. Matter of fact, two months before she transitioned, I told you that the king will be gone within two months. Okay, anybody remember that? Wave at me. Matter of fact, there's a video where I, where I posted that. I said within two months, you know, she's going to be gone. And so now that's just the revelation of the Holy Spirit, how Spirit reveal. Also based on some astronomical stuff, astrological things that I was looking at. And so, but, but my point right now is her uh, funeral was on September the 19th. Now, when you do uh, uh, a calculation of the dates from the time of the funeral, and I'm basing it on, you know, not my time. If you base on like uh, you're, you're in different time zones here on this platform. And so it may be off maybe a day based on your time zone if you do the calculation and stuff. And so it comes to 230 days. 230 days, say from the time of her funeral to the time of the coronation of the king. Okay, 230 days. Why is that important? Now, if you were looking, everybody, you're not saying that you have to be looking at the news all the time and stuff, but I, I kind of like watch different things that's happening. Okay, on that day of her uh, funeral, there was like 230 whales that beach. 230 whales that beach that was signifying 230 days later what was going to be happening. What do you mean by that? Okay, we're talking divine numerology. We're talking about connecting the prophetic dots because everything is prophetic. So where did these whales beach? 
they, they beach in Tasmania, which is a part of Australia, which is one of the territories of, of England. Okay, there is like 14 territories that, that, that is controlled by England, the British Empire. And one plus four is what? Five. Okay. And so just like the degrees of the, uh, of the sun and the moon. Are you guys still following me here? I'm just trying to connect some dots for you. And we're going to get a little bit further in it. I'm not going to go deep into that tonight, that part, but I just want to just connect some dots for you. So, so there's 230 whales at beach uh, there. And then uh, on Kings Island, there was uh, 14 whales that beached. Okay. Now, this is within the same time frame of her funeral. Okay, so you have one place uh, that is on, in, on Tasmania where you have 230 whales that beach and most of them died there. And then you have 14 whales beach on Kings Island, which is an island off of Tasmania, which is yet uh, goes under the territory of the British Empire. Are you still following me here? Okay, so we have 14, one plus four, sperm whales. And, uh, and so King Charles, before he was the king, he was the, the prince of what? Wales. <laughs> Do you see what I'm saying? I'm only showing you how to connect prophetic, prophetic dots and, and how when you're looking at things, when you are reading uh, news or whatever, don't just look linear. Don't just look with the eyes of the natural. You know, in the book of uh, uh, Isaiah, he says, watchmen, what of the night? What do you see? Watch me. What do you not? God told Jeremiah, you know, what do you see? And so the spirit of the Lord is, is asking us in this hour to look, to see. We talked about eye imagination, to see. Use your eye to see because there are messages that are hidden there. And so now we find from the queen's um, uh, funeral to uh, the coronation uh, about 230 days. Okay, so there are no coincidences. There are no coincidences. Uh, everything is prophetic. Everything has a, a, uh, a, a meaning, a spiritual meaning, esoteric meaning. There are messages in everything. And so we just have to be able to look for them and uh, to be open to see them and to go beyond, you know, where we have been trained to think. Get out of the box. Okay, is everybody understanding that, right? Okay, now I'm not going to really get get further into that. I'm going to save that for another time and talk about the stone of scone and the Ark of the Covenant and all of this other stuff that was presented during that ceremony there and the coronation of the king. It was all there. You know, it was just amazing. I was watching uh, the um, the replay of it afterwards, just like, it's like, you just, it's just amazing. Well, we'll get to that. It's okay. So, but tonight I want to just get into uh, more numerology. I just shared some with you here. Did, did you guys get that? Okay. I'm going to open up your mics. How many of you got what I just said there? I know I was probably talking a little bit fast. Open up your mic and say, I got it. If you got it. I 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 got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Got it. Yeah. I got it. Okay. Excellent. Excellent. So divine numerology, I call it divine numerology because I believe that it is divine. Now we do understand and we understand that the Western Christianity, modern Western Christianity, they, they say that numerology is of the occult and I have to agree with them. It is. It means it is hidden. It is hidden from those who do not see. The word occult means to hide, to hide. It's just like the moon occults the sun or the sun occults the moon, eclipse. Okay. It means to hide. Okay. But it is not like in the negative sense. It is a spiritual science that's been around since the very beginning of time, even before time, I should say, because the most have the creator of everything that you see and that you cannot see. He used numbers to create everything. Everything is based on a number system, based on divine uh, uh, mathematics, uh, algebra, geometry, and all of that, all of those esoteric sciences of the numbers. So the numbers are used for counting. Numbers are used in uh, mathematics. Numbers are used for keeping things in order. Numbers are a sign 
uh, to alphabet, to develop uh, another meaning, to get another meaning, to, uh, because it is a language within itself, okay? And so we find that numbers are codes. Numbers are codes. So they're not just numbers. And some of you were part of the meetings way back long time ago when we first started, I think, uh, where I, I told you guys uh, that your address uh, uh, has a message in it. Your driver's license number, your social security number, everything, your phone number and stuff, if you, uh, you know, look into that, it would have a message for you. And we're not going to get into that tonight, but just only showing you that there is the hidden language of numbers, the hidden language of numbers. Now, you might say, well, I'm not for sure about that. And, you know, and some of you that may be listening later, you might say, I'm not for sure that if my church believes in that, or we were supposed to believe in that. But, you know, there is a book in the Bible that is called the book of numbers the book of numbers now numerology is the study of the hidden meaning of numbers the occult meaning the hidden occult means hidden it doesn't necessarily mean something weird or crazy or scary but numerology is the study of the hidden meaning of numbers oh, and how they influence our lives and how they influence the world that's what numerology is now god was so into numbers and he's so into numbers that he gave you a whole book in your Bible that is a part of the Torah <laughs> that's called the book of numbers. Now, and when you read the book of numbers, you find all of these numbers that to the natural mind makes no sense. Why are they numbering all of these things? Everything is numbered there. It's because there's a deep esoteric meaning. It wasn't just about the number of a tribe of people. It wasn't just about the number of, 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 of a family group or a number of this or that, but it was something much deeper, the message was. And when you start to study uh, numerology and, and understand that, it makes sense to you that this book here that we have that is called a Bible, it is a book of codes, okay? It is not just a book of history, but it's a book of mystery. And one of the mysteries are, uh, 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 is, is, the, if the, is the mystery of numbers, the mystery of numbers, that everything has a numeric value. Now, so uh, for example, you will find in the book of Numbers, there are 36 chapters in the book of Numbers, 36 chapters. Now, what is that kind of like a clue for? 360. 360. So that's a master number there. Why is that important that, that it is 36 chapters and it is representing 360 because it represents full circle, okay, completing a cycle. Okay, what does that mean? These Hebrew Israelites, they came out of Egypt. They are there in the wilderness for how long? For 40 years, they had, and they had to complete this whole cycle. They had to go through this whole cycle. They went in circles. Your Bible tells you that. And so the book of Numbers, it records their journeying when they came out of Egypt all the way to they complete the full circle or cycle and come into the promised land because this is your journey. This is your inner journey where you are coming out from Egypt representing a limited mentality, uh, representing slave bondage and all of that, uh, uh, that, that, that type of mentality. And you go through a wilderness experience that's very wild and scary and crazy where you have to really, really trust God. And then you finally get to the place where the prayer is answered, the needs are met where things happen and, and when you get there you have gone full circle you have gone full circle you have completed that whole cycle of experiences the good the bad the ugly the warfare and everything and now you're ready to go on to the next level because you've come full circle are you understanding what i'm saying and so the 36 uh uh chapters here is representing these people which is your journey these people completing this journey which is your journey uh completing this cycle because once they completed that after those 40 years, and we're going to talk about that too, that number here, they were able to enter into the promised land. They were able to enter into the, the promise of everything that had been promised to their forefathers. But, you know, when they completed that cycle, it was a whole new generation of people. 
wasn't it? It, was, it wasn't the same people that started out. It wasn't the same people that started out. It was a whole new uh, generation of people. It was their descendants that actually partook of the land of milk and honey, the land of Canaan, the, the promised land. What does that mean for you and I? When you complete your cycle, you are not the same that you started out. Hallelujah. You should not be the same. If you are the same that you started out on, you have not gone through it yet. And so you're yet going to have to go through it. You're going to yet have to go through it. the whole purpose for these cycles or these circles that we're going in is to phase out that version of you to phase out that version of you that whole version that came out of the out of Egypt had to be phased out matter of fact Yahweh told them he says none of these people are gonna go in into the promised land matter of fact even Moses ain't gonna go in he can look at it from afar but he won't go in only Joshua and Caleb are gonna go in because they had a different spirit a different energy that allowed them to transcend all the limitations and say that yes I can yes I can yes I can I am well able to overcome it does not matter how big the giants are how big the tests and trials and the challenges I can go through it and it will not destroy me I need somebody that that believe that to open up their mic and to shout yes I can yes I can Yes, yes, I can. I can. Yes, 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 I can. They said that we are well able to overcome. Yes, we can. And ten of them said, no, we can't. No, we can't. No, we can't. You know, <laughs> you know, that's like, uh, excuse me, we have that dialogue within us. many times and so and so now that whole generation that saw all the miracles all the plagues and saw the red sea open and all the wonderful things the manna fall from heaven and stuff they got phased out that version of you that is existing now has got to be phased out it's got to be a whole new version of you must come forth that is like your offspring if you will you know that is that is another version of you that is coming forth that's going to inherit the promise why because that new version of you has a whole new mindset has a whole new way of thinking you know has a whole new idea and concept of what we call god and spirituality because the old concept of what we call god and spirituality will not get you through will not get you into the promised land you might see it from afar but you won't be able to actually uh uh experience it and internalize it because that part has to be uh, phased out so we have numbers uh there that is showing us this when you read about all of these numbers and it's just when you read it, it's like oh my god a hundred and this or three hundred and that a thousand of this and ten of this and what does all of that represent it's about numerology it's about numerology okay now one of the little thing here we just uh told you that there are 36 chapters in here which is basically a hidden clue of the 36 degree uh circle or cycle or just like space you have the 12 zodiac signs and they go and the sun is moving through each one the sun tropically speaking right now is in taurus and uh it goes through that 36 degree or 360 degree cycle only to start right back where it uh where it uh to end up where it started with a whole new energy a whole new expression now you find in numbers chapter one verse uh just i'm giving you like little clues here just to, before i get into this uh, numbers chapter one and you'll find uh that they numbered the people of how many there were okay and numbers chapter one and verse 45 let's start here and then we're going to move on so were all those who were numbered of the children of israel by the house of their fathers from 20 years old and upward all who were able to go forth in the war, even all of those who were uh, who were numbered were 600,000, 603,550. 
Now, it is very exact when you read the book of Numbers and study it. It is very precise with these numbers here because the numbers represent a vibrational energy, a vibrational frequency that it is that is manifesting there. There is a message, an energetic message that is there in numbers. And so we have 600,550 of those that are that are 20 years or older men that are strong and able to go to war or not counting the women and the children okay and so now so and you look at that number 603,550 so you have six plus three is nine nine plus five plus five five plus five is ten and so what do you have it comes to what 19 then you reduce one plus nine is ten Okay, and then you drop the zero and you have one. So what is the hidden message there? When God numbered these people, he saw them as one, one, one. That's why he said, this is my son, Israel. That was including male, female, and all of that. He saw them as one. So one of the hidden messages here that, that God was bringing forth, as I said, 603,550, that he saw them as one as one because here O Israel the Shema that the Lord your God is one Lord so they had to be one there was only one in the grander scheme of thing and the frequency that was there was one now that's just one little uh, clue there before we go a little bit further now in understanding uh, this hidden language of numbers and stuff there is what is called gematria Gematria, uh, you see me do it all the time. You see me do it when I'm doing readings here and and <clears throat> and all of that. And you see when I'm using like my my Hebrew alphabet cards and stuff and and all of that. So uh, in Gematria, it it shows you that each letter of the alphabet has a numeric value. We do this with every language. You can do it with any language, but I I basically use it with uh, the Hebrew language. And I basically do it with English too sometimes. For example, A equals one, or Aleph equals one, okay? And so B would equals two, or Beth would equals two. C in English, uh, would, the American alphabet, would, would be three, or, or, or Gimel in Hebrew would be three. You know, four, you know, is D in Hebrew is Dalet which mean, you know, which would be four. So you got that all the way down to 26 in the English alphabet, okay? But in the Hebrew, there's 22 letters of the Hebrew alphabet. Each one has a numeric value, okay? But it's a little bit different when you go beyond 10. And I'm not gonna go further into that right now, but uh, just showing you that. So it is called gematria. That is the interpretation of the Hebrew letters based on the numeric value. It is the interpretation of the Hebrew letters based on numeric value. For example, the letter uh, uh, hey, the fifth letter of the Hebrew alphabet would be five. And then we take you know, the word hey and what it represents and stuff. But then we expand upon it, understanding that, that five it has other meanings also, which represents grace. Okay, multiplication, which we're going to talk about in a few minutes here. And so that's how we get uh, deeper messages and understanding this, uh, the, at the esoteric truth of this, understanding that there is a hidden language. I think I've given you enough background about numerology now. Is that enough for you guys? You guys kind of like understand it now? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Got that. Got that. Everybody got that right. Okay, great. Okay, so now I'm going to just show you a little bit uh, uh, something here. Now, when you are, uh, for example, you know, all of us here are ministers, you know, in, in, in some sense or another, you know, we are minister means one that serves. So we're called to serve no matter what you're doing. You may not be a part of what is considered the five fold ministry, apostle, prophet, evangelist, pastor, teacher uh, that is in the, you know, uh, Christian concept or biblical concept of that of that order that is set up, you know, and it and it and it didn't just start with the um, with, uh, with 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 the with the Christian concept you find it was also in the in the Torah you find that Aaron you know he had these uh, four sons and they made up that five-fold ministry in a sense in the Old Testament of the Aaronic priesthood that was there okay so now in the New Testament we find the scripture where he says he gave some apostles prophets evangelists pastors and teachers 
Okay, now I'm just uh, showing you that here. And so there's the esoteric science behind it. And what I'm saying is this, is that you don't have to be called or, or ordained to be a quote unquote minister to minister. You don't have to be called or have gone to a psychic school to be a call a psychic or a seer or a prophet or anything like that. But you all have these abilities within you. All of you have those abilities because they were given to you by the most high God. You came packaged with it. It is all within you. All, all of God is within you. Now, there are certain expressions or parts of this God that may express more profoundly in your life. Some people, it could be with dreams, some with vision, some with intuition, some with some are empaths, okay? And uh, others, just uh, words of knowledge, we call it. Just, you know, things would just come to you, you know, or things like that. But when we get into the, into the area of numerology, you can use your ability, however spirit is manifesting in you with numerology. Matter of fact, as I said next week, I'm going to show you how even with this word and even with the strong concordance, uh, the way it's set up. Up because I believe, this is my belief, you don't have to believe that. I believe that despite of the errors that may be translated or transliterated in here, despite the supplied uh, uh, text that was placed in here, despite the background of King James and some of those other weird, weird people and stuff like that, I believe that there was a supernatural force guiding them, even though they were not aware of it in the translation, even to the putting together of the books, the chapters, and the verses, because we understand that when the text, the scrolls were written, they didn't have like, okay, this is chapter one, chapter two, chapter three, and this is going to have 17 verses, was going to have 52 verses. It was nothing like that. But somehow, I believe that there was a force guiding them to cut off at a certain area to start another chapter. Do you understand what I'm saying? And I believe because there was a force guiding them, it allowed us to be able to peer a little bit deeper into the science of numerology, the prophetic science, because it was going to, there were going to be images, there were going to be, I'm sorry, uh, uh, mess, hidden messages there for those that look for it, all right? So we've just talked about uh, the book of Numbers and the 306 degrees, 36 chapters, 3 plus 6 is 9, and we, got, we can deal with that, that is Teth, that is the serpent eating his tail, there's a serpent eating his tail, that's the circle again, see that? Are you following me? Book of Numbers, they went in a circle, 360 degrees, okay? And so you take 360 degrees or 360, 3 plus 6, not counting the zero, you can't count that, is 9. The name of the Hebrew alphabet is Teth. And what is Teth? The Ouroboros. That is the circle, the serpent eating its tail. It is death and rebirth. It's about the death of one version of you and the rebirth of another version of you. And we go through this over and over again until we can reconcile all the versions of us into one, just as Yahweh saw them as one. Okay, are you getting this? All right. Now, if you have questions or something, write them down. We'll get to them a little bit later. And stuff, and so uh, so that you can you know remember your question, you can write it down, and we'll probably get to it later. Okay, so I'm gonna just like deal with some of the numbers here and deal with some of the meanings of the numbers. Now I want to say this to you here that um, each numerologist or numerologer uh, they may have their own way of uh, of defining what the numbers mean. Do you understand that? Each person, especially if they're functioning in this prophetic science, they may have their own way of, of what uh, of defining the numbers. And so some of the numbers that I give to you tonight and tell you what they mean, and if you are acquainted with the science of numerology, it may be a little bit different from your definition. And that's okay. 
Why is that okay? How could there be different meanings and stuff? For example, if you go online uh, and you type in the meaning of a number or something like that, it's gonna give you maybe angel numbers, which is okay. It's gonna give you other numbers and stuff like that, you know, which is okay. And, but what I'm telling you is that as you are developing your spirituality and your spiritual gifts and your ability to understand and see the meaning of numbers or anything like that, you will have a specific template uh, within you that you will draw from and what it means for you and that's going to work for you it's just like when you are operating in the prophetic sciences of like say word of knowledge or prophecy and stuff like that when i'm when i'm functioning at that level in a conference or on here or wherever like i i, I have certain things that i can see that i can relate to for example many of you hear me sometimes say that i'm seeing things and they look like cartoons like it right and that's the way i see things sometimes right and i might see a certain thing and and that i am familiar with that i have, may have seen 10 years ago 12 years ago and but but spirit is showing me that is my sign that this message is for this person that i'm in front of or that i'm speaking to does that make sense to you OK, so you would develop your own inner template of what means what to you now. So uh, my uh, uh, let's see when I'm doing numerology, I base mine on Hebraic and Chaldean, Hebraic and Chaldean, because for me, that's what works for me. And so when I'm doing numerology here, I'm using these cards or these alphabet cards and stuff. And, uh, and my understanding of numbers and my understanding of the meaning of numbers based from uh, scripture and also Chaldean number, which is very close, very close in line with, with the Hebraic meaning and understanding of numbers. That's my background. That's what I am using. OK, and that's what works good for me. And it doesn't mean that I won't use something else also, but that is what I work with. Are you understanding that? Are you understanding that? Okay, um, all right. For example, if I'm in a meeting or something and I look out in the audience and I see all at once a certain number, I would say like, I will just say like 36 or I'll say 360. If I see a number over a person's head, because that's the way I see things sometimes, or I see the number on a person or something. Okay, for me, I know that they are completing a cycle. I know that they're at the end of something and something new is about to begin, all right? For example, if I see a five, maybe in the spirit, you know, uh, hanging over a person or maybe a five on the person or something, I'll know for, uh, that that spirit is showing me uh, that it's a time of multiplication and grace for them, that something is about to happen. I will speak from that perspective. Are you understanding what I'm saying? All right. And so that's how I do it. And so I'm trying to show you in this master class that you would develop your way of understanding what numbers mean to you. And as you are uh, meditating with people, praying with people, or as you are talking to people, sometimes you might see a number or maybe you will uh, have an idea, ask the person what is their address, and in your head, you will like add up the numbers and you'll reduce it maybe to a single digit, and then all at once you'll get a message. <laughs> Okay, are you understanding? Okay, that okay. I'm just showing you th th this is a, a class. We're just showing you how to operate in that. Now, for example, number uh, the, the zero. <clears throat> zero. Okay, we're gonna start with zero. Okay, because sometimes you might steal zero. And so I'm showing you how to uh, to 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 do uh, readings, prophesying with this, and to just and now zero. It means void. It means uh, limitless. It means cycle. OK, but it also represents like the womb of creation. You see the zero there. In other words, it is waiting for something. It is waiting for something to be planted and to give birth to. OK, now, if, if I were to say it a little bit different, like in, say, talking to uh, someone and stuff, you know, we have in this culture here uh, that we say, don't be a zero, be a hero. Okay, don't be a zero, don't be a hero. And I can understand that. But when you look into the esoteric science of it, it's okay to be a zero. <laughs> it's okay to be a zero. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because there is an unlimited 
potential that is there in your life waiting to just be seated and to birth forth and to come forth with something very powerful. And so you're like a blank slate in a sense, and you're waiting for something to manifest to write the next chapter of your life and your story and things of that sort, which is unlimited, which can be unlimited. So it represents the womb of creation. Another thing, with numbers, there is a uh, light side and there is a shadow side. There is a light side and there's a shadow side, a positive and a negative side. I'm going to deal mostly with the positive, but I am going to touch on some of the negative sides so that when you are looking at numbers, because we are in this life of yin and yang, life Light and darkness, you know, positive and negative. We're going through different experiences and changes. You you understand where you are on that numeric frequency. If you are experiencing the positive side or the light side of that numeric frequency, you know how to adjust yourself and move forward in that. If you are experiencing the negative side of that frequency, you know how to adjust yourself and move forward in that. Are you understanding what I'm saying? Okay, and so the, so the positive side of the zero, okay, uh, represents limitless. You know, there are no limits. You are the you are the womb of creation. You're you're waiting to uh, to receive a seed, an idea, or a thought, or a word that's gonna produce. And there are no limitations. Matter of fact, the zero can even represent like God, if you will, that unending circle you know, that has no beginning or no end, okay? And so now the negative side of that or the shadow side of the zero would mean a state of nothingness, nothingness, feeling nothingness, feeling that, that you know, that there is nothing, that, that you're just completely empty, don't know what to do, and that the frequency is extremely, extremely low, and you're just like in limbo. That is the negative side of the zero, okay? Now, the next one is one, one, okay? Now, this is kind of like a no-brainer almost, like it represents unity, unity. It also represents power and force, like the Holy One, okay? God, supreme being, is one. That is that power, that is that force. Matter of fact, the very first time one is mentioned in scripture, because remember I use Hebrew and Chaldean type of uh, methods and looking at the word from the Hebrew language to derive my definitions for the numbers, okay? The very first time is used is in Genesis 2, 24, and it speaks of when, um, uh, God, uh, uh, the creation of, of Adam and Eve, and they too became one flesh, echad, echad, uh, that were there. And it, the word gives the idea of, of bringing everything into unity, bringing, ev bringing everything into a place of power and force. And so when we come into a place of oneness within ourselves and with everything that is, instead of you are filled with power. You have everything that you need because it's going to come out of that oneness. Another meaning for one is self-reliant. You are relying on yourself. And I don't mean the lower self. I mean the higher self, the Christ self. You are trusting and depending on the Christ self that is within you. Okay, one. Okay, we could go on and on with the one, the unity. I think I mentioned that. And uh, the first of the Hebrew alphabet is Aleph which means power, you know, uh, the will, the might, the strength, the beginning, because uh, uh, scripture says that he is, if you were reading in the um, uh, Greek, uh, the Hebrew rather, it, instead of saying alpha and omega, it would say the aleph and the tav. He is the aleph and the tav, the beginning. So that one represents beginning. Okay, now the negative side of the one, it can represent alone, okay, feeling alone feeling all by yourself. And so we do experience both negative and positive or light and shadow sides of this frequency because these are all frequencies. Whenever we call out these numbers, when Yahweh created everything by these numbers, it was just a bunch of frequencies that was coming together, meshing together to bring into being what was in his mind. Okay, so we understand that. Now, the number two, two represents agreement. 
agreement. Okay, this is the this is the light side of it. It means compatible. Okay, uh, scripture says out of the mouth of two witnesses, every word is established. So it represents something that is being established within you. Okay, or within your life or whatever it is that you are meditating on or praying about, it speaks of coming into compatibility with that. That is the positive side of it. If you will look at the Hebrew alphabet, that would be the Beth, okay, the house, okay. You are that house coming into agreement with everything that is within your house. Now, the negative side or the shadow side of two, it represents duality. Duality doesn't really have to be something negative, but looking at it from this side, duality represent two-minded a double-minded man is unstable in all of his ways okay and this duality and this two also represents division now for example if you are uh, uh looking at someone are you looking at people and and you are you know functioning in the spirit and you see a number two say over this couple or something like that all right now you have to have discernment to understand and to know how to read that okay Okay, because it, it represents two is the bet, the house, but it could represent there's some division, you know, in that family, there's some division that is going on and that need to be addressed. And so what I do, if I am like uh, in a situation like that, and I've been in a situation like that, where I'm talking to people, meet me even on the phone, all at once I'll see a two come before me. So that is a message to me that, that there is some division going on. And so I'm going to address it. I'm going to ask some questions. I'm going to talk about it, especially if it's not uh, completely clear, okay? Because that is spirit is opening up that way to me so that that can be healed, whatever it is in that relationship to bring them into agreement instead of division. Are you understanding this? Okay, All right. Okay, so let's go on. So three, let me see, did I give you a scripture? You don't really need a scripture for that one. So three, the number three is a number that represents fullness. It represents completion. Uh, the third letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Gmel. Gemel, okay. Now, uh, Gemel has multiple meanings. One of the meanings for Gemel, which is like the feet, it represents moving toward your blessing. It represents the camel, but it also represents poverty. It represents challenges. It represents um, humility, okay. That's basically what that means. It represents humbling yourself to a point so that you can receive all of the riches and the things that is there but the positive side of it it represents like uh completion it represents agreement it represents uh, uh, uh blessings in that sense also uh, another thing it, it, it that shows it represents perfection luke chapter 12 uh, i believe it is in verse 32 uh, yeshua said this to the people he says um today i work miracles to, to tomorrow i no today i cast out devil tomorrow i work miracles and the third day i shall be perfected the third day perfected and so we see that the number three is synonymous with perfection or completion okay uh, in that sense and you'll find that in other parts of the scripture in the torah also okay in the tanakh you'll find that all right and so but the negative side or the shadow side of three represents challenges it represents challenges, just as the gamil, the camel has to stoop low. Remember Yeshua said that except, uh, he says that it's harder for a rich man to enter into the kingdom because he trusts in his riches. And he says it's, it's like a, a camel going through the eye of a needle, okay? And the, the eye of the needle was a very low door. There was on the, on the gate of the city that the, the camel had to stoop to crawl through, you know? In other words, he had to unload some stuff in order to go through and so it speaks of challenges because many times we don't want to unload some of the things that we need to just unload it was not that they were going to be unloaded forever because they were going to go on the other side but we have to be willing to give up whatever it is that we need to give up so that we can go through okay you see that so the number three there uh represents that so uh, the number four uh it represents material creation OK, that's one of the definitions for it that I use again, you know, and because uh, you find that material creation came forth on the fourth day in Genesis material creation. So it represents material needs. It represents uh, blessings, abundance, material things of that sort. 
okay, that uh, that's there for us. Uh, it represents wholeness. Um, it represents balance. It represents stability. You see these uh, four sides that creates a, a square. And so all of that is a part of a four. There's many, many other definitions for it. I'm just giving you some of the basics so that you can understand uh, this in numerology here. Okay, so material creation is one of the main things. Okay, now if you were looking at the, the uh, shadow side of it, you would see that it would represent a lack of support. Okay, so you find that the, the numbers and with the uh, energetic frequencies of this and the meanings of it and stuff, you know, it is just the opposite basically of what the positive is okay because that is the way everything is set up in this uh three-dimensional space that we're in and this is how we learn things and we go through both positive and negative amen okay good i hope you guys are still here and still getting this all right let me uh see here okay so all right so then we're gonna go to uh number five Number five, uh, five, the, the, you find in Genesis on the fifth day of creation, again, I go back to this and with the uh, Chaldean understanding, five is the number of multiplication. You find on the fifth day that when the animal kingdom was created, he, he blessed them and told them to multiply, multiply. And remember, we just talked about earlier about the, the, the star code for the phase that we're in now where you're gonna see everything accelerating, moving fast, okay? So he says multiply. So five represents multiplication and yes, it also represents grace or the favor of God. It takes the favor and the grace of God so that we can multiply, all right? Now, and um, let's see, five is a number that also denotes ministry, especially in the uh, uh, Christian, idea of, of gematria and numerology and things of that sort. Now, but, but the negative or the shadow side of this can represent criticism, criticism, okay? And so now if you're on that side of the five, uh, the spirit would be saying to you, don't be critical, okay? Or it could be saying, you know, that someone is criticizing you, okay? And if you happen to see that on a person and you have to discern you know, is this speaking of, of multiplication coming to this person? Is this speaking of uh, blessings and the favor of God? Or is the spirit saying, you know, don't be so critical? All right. Are you understanding? OK, so there's the positive and the negative. Side. And, you know, it's, it's really amazing the way it happens and stuff. Everything happens so quickly, so fast, like in the spirit. It's like when you're receiving information, you're receiving revelation from the spirit. You're getting all this data just 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 coming just really, really fast. And really fast you're gonna have time to really think and, and it's good because see if you think about it which i do sometimes you can easily mess up or you can put in your ideas into that instead of just speaking and letting spirit flow okay and so and this is uh, why many times i i'll ask people i say i hope that means something to you i hope that resonates with you because i have no clue what i'm saying because at that point i am just kind of like channeling i'm just saying whatever is coming to my spirit whatever is coming out of me without thinking about it i'm saying what i'm seeing pictures or images or whatever or numbers or things like that Okay, and so uh, and so that's uh, that's what I'm talking about there. So you're looking at the both sides of it. Now six is another one here. We find that you know most people in the uh, I guess uh, Christian concept of numerology understand that that six is the number of man. Why? Because uh, man was created on the sixth day. Okay, so it's the number of man. So what does that mean? So it's the number of humanity, and it is uh, also uh, the relationship to what is called the Trinity. Remember, we dealt with three, right? And so this is the other set of three. Okay, in three, you have like the triangle. You have the triangle there, okay, right? And so with six, you have the interlaced triangles that create the what is called the Star of David. Okay, with, with the uh, pyramid going that way, it represents, you know, God moving down or coming into mankind when it's like, you know, that way where the arrow is pointing down. That is that is spirit coming into, into the material plane. That is what you can call, if you want, Father, Son, Holy Spirit descending into the material plane, into our world, into us. And us, 
with the with the pyramid with the point going this way is us reaching up to the spiritual plane to God. And so when you have them interlaced, you have the six pointed star, which is called the Star of David, which is very powerful. And it represents God and man connected together. And so on the sixth day, the day of man, uh, the day that man was created on and six represented that, that's what it represents, the relationship with God because he walked and talked with God in the cool of the day. However, the negative side of six, it represents lacking perfection lacking perfection okay you'll see in the next number why okay so we find six it represents the relationship between the most high between the triune being that is one that is expressing itself into spirit soul and body man okay as father son holy spirit expressing it in in uh spirit soul and body one okay uh manifesting as the star of david okay but the negative side of that would be uh uh lack okay lacking from perfection lacking in that relationship all right now seven okay everybody knows that's the number of perfection okay so six is the day or the number before seven and if we stay in this in the realm of six or the frequency of six and don't move forward, you will lack in your perfection or your uh, spiritual maturity, because that's what we're talking about. When we speak of perfection, we're not talking about you dot every I, you cross every T, and everything is like done exactly right. But it represents your spirituality and your spiritual growth, because you have, uh, you're, inter, you're embracing, you're interlaced with, you know, uh, God and all of that is, okay, and so seven represents it's the number of god it represents uh for spiritual perfection now if you were to look at the negative side if you will or the, how can there be a negative side of seven you know but every number has a vibratory frequency and you look at the seventh letter of the hebrew alphabet which is really not uh negative or a shadow but you find the zayin the zayin can be a sword or it can be a tool it can be a sword or it could be a tool Okay, and so what does that mean? Okay, now a sword is used for fighting, for warfare, for destroying. A tool is used for just the opposite, for cultivating, for farming, to bring life. Okay, and so we have that with the Zayin, uh, with the seventh uh, number there. Okay, let me see here. Number eight, I'm just trying to find maybe a scripture for you. I think everybody understands that eight represents a new beginning okay why do you say that you go through seven days in the week and then the eighth day which is the first day is a new beginning okay so eight is a number of new beginning but it is also a number of infinity like the sideways eight okay infinity so it represents transformation because of the eighth day you've gone through the cycle or the seven day cycle or the seven experience or the seven chakras you get to the eighth all right we could say it so many different ways that brings about a new beginning that brings about transformation that brings about uh the infinite power that is within you the power source that is within you okay are you understanding this okay and all of these uh frequencies they're there within you and we are functioning at different ones at different times now the uh shadow side of eight okay represents death remember this is the new beginning life and transformation matter of fact even resurrection uh it represents okay in christian understanding that jesus uh he he was resurrected at the end of the sabbath as it dawned toward the first day of the week which was the eighth day right you understand that but the shadow side represents death <coughs> represents shadows it's just like the uh eighth uh, zodiac sign is the house of of death but it's also the house of transformation okay because you are transformed through death whether it is a physical death or whether it is the egoic death or emotional death or some other death, you know, it, the, the purpose of it is to bring transformation, okay? And uh, nine, the ninth letter of the Hebrew alphabet, that is finality, to bring an end to it, because as in the ancient numeric system, uh, just like with, uh, with, with Hebrew, <clears throat> now you have moved from the single 
uh, numbers and you're about to move into the double digits. So it represents an end. It represents finality. Okay. It also, um, the, the ninth letter of the, of the Hebrew alphabet, again, is Teth. One of my favorite ones, and it, that is the Ouroboros, the end and the beginning, the end and the beginning. Okay, again, we see there, and so we see that uh, it represents a birthing. Okay, why? Because a woman goes nine months and then she gives birth. Okay, right. So we see that is tied up in the number nine, uh, giving birth to something or delivery or deliverance. All of that is tied up in the number nine as well as death and rebirth on the shadow side of nine okay again like i said it is you can go on and on and on but it represents wisdom the serpent's wisdom okay and uh which is very powerful okay as yeshua said be wise as a serpent and harmless as a dove okay now the next one is 10 10, that should be an easy, easy one for us. Okay, 10. How many commands were there? Okay, there are 10 commands or commandments. Okay, so the number 10, okay, is represents divine law and order. Okay, so you're, you are, uh, say you're praying with someone, you're in meditation with someone and, or just by yourself, you know, once you see the number 10 comes before you, what does that mean? I'm seeing the number 10, okay? Number one, it could represent that, that God's divine order uh, is coming to your life, okay? And that, and that you're functioning in that, you're fulfilling that, okay? Or it could mean a message from the Spirit saying, hey, you need to line up. You need to get your, your things in order in your life. You need to bring them into divine order, okay? And we know that 10 reduces to one. In other words, you get your power back by getting back to the one. And there is only the one, the Holy One. And be still and know that I am God, the Holy One that is within you. So this is about getting back to that space of oneness and realization and your whole life comes into play and comes into the way that God designed it to be. The 10th letter of the Hebrew alphabet is Yod, Yod which is the hand of God. So when you see number 10 and stuff, it could represent the hand of God that is being extended to you, the hand of God that is on your life. But in, in astrology and also in astronomy, there is what is called the yod, the yod. And it is, it is the finger of destiny, the finger of faith, okay? And so uh, that's when the stars are in a specific formation and it's called a yod. Now, uh, so the yod can represent God's destiny, God's purpose and plan is being implemented in your life because of that divine order that is manifesting uh, within you. Or he is pointing the way, he's pointing the way, or he's pointing at you. All of this is a part of the number 10. He's pointed you out, realization that I'm chosen. I'm chosen for this path that I'm on. I'm chosen for the things that that is happening the good the bad and the ugly and that all things are going to work together for the good right okay now the negative or the shadow side of 10 could represent disorder disorder okay because the positive is the order and as we know the the uh, numbers have uh, that the positive and the negative now all right you got that so the 11th one if you go to the 11th chapter, I'm not, you don't have to go there. I'm just going to kind of quote it. You find in the 11th chapter of Genesis, this is where you see uh, a Nimrod in the kingdom that is erect there. Now, the first of all, the positive side of 11 is what? A portal, a portal. And so the universe, God's spirit is saying to you that, hey, there's a portal that is open for you. The door is open for you. That is time to move to the next level. This is why people see 1111. We've been seeing them for years and years and people don't know why. You look at the clock, it's 1111. You, you know, you wake up in the middle of the night. I mean, at night is 1111 in the morning or you get some paper or uh, that says 1111 or uh, Jeremy and I had this experience, I think one day where everything we did, like we went shopping, it was 11, 11. We ordered food, it was 11, 11. And we looked at the clock, it was, 11. It was just constantly, the spirit was like just renovated. And he was the one that caught it. Like, you know, look at all this, look at all this, 11, 11. And so it represents the portal. It represents this time to wake up, wake up and move forward into, you know, what, what spirit is having you to do to really pay attention to that. But, but the negative side of, uh, of the 11, it represents like disorder. 
disorder. You find that Genesis chapter 11, you find that this kingdom that was called Babel and stuff, and you find the uh, disorder that came to it. And you look at the two there, and it, and it, and it, and it, uh, the negative side of the shadow side of it, it would represent division. Okay. Okay. And can the two walk together except they be in agreement as one? Okay. And so the universe would be saying to us to come into agreement. Come into agreement. Don't be double minded two soul. Come into agreement. Okay. With your Christ self, with what is taking place within you and your life at this time. Okay. Now let me go a little bit further here. I think we got that. Let's see here. Um, number 12. That's another easy one that we talk about from time to time. And uh, it represents governmental authority or kingdom authority, you can call it. And all of that because we have the number 12 right throughout scripture from Genesis, you have the 12, you have the 12 sons, you have the 12 tribes, you have the 12 apostles, you have the 12 zodiac signs, the 12 months, all of this is organized there and that's how God functions through that into in our lives, bringing everything in order in that governmental rule and when I say governmental rule. I'm using a term that the scripture basically used in Genesis 1 when he said that he made the son to rule. And that word rule in Hebrew means the governor over the day and the, and the moon over the night and the constellations to rule over the night. So they're the governors there. And so we have the governorship of, of spirit that is governing. This one scripture says he's the governor of the nation. So the 12, it represents that, that your life has come into that place where you are no longer your, your own, but you're being governed, you're being disciplined by spirit. Okay, it's just like Yeshua takes the 12 and he disciples them, okay, and causes their lives to be totally transformed, okay. Now, the opposite side of that, if there would be an opposite side of that, would be just the opposite, it would be anti, you know, of what you would call government or, or things like that, anti-teaching. And there are a lot of people that are like that, right? You know, you can't tell them anything, you know, they won't submit it because it's a bad word in the Western thinking and the Western concept. We don't submit because we're Americans, you know, <laughs> we are the number one and we are, we are the ones that tell you everything and stuff and, you know, whatever. And so that's just the Western mindset. But when you understand true spirituality, you understand that the word submit is a very powerful word, you know, and uh, whether it is in a spiritual setting or whether it is in your home or whether it is in uh in the secular world. Now, when I say submit, don't get confused and don't get it twisted. I'm not talking about like when your government tell you to do crazy stuff that is totally anti-Christ and anti-God and things of that sort. And I'm not talking about in your home, if you happen to have a spouse or something that is wanting you to do something that is very, that's going to violate you and your beliefs. That's not what I'm talking about. Or if you're in a religious or spiritual setting and that leader wants you to do something that is totally anti-God. I'm not talking about submit to that kind of stuff. That's not what I'm talking about. But submit is submit, come submission, coming under the mission. In other words, realizing that there is a mission there is a goal, there is a vision, there should be for every family that is here, and especially if you are married here, your family should have a goal, should have a mission, and, uh, and men need to step up <laughs> and, and, and develop that, that, that goal or that mission for the family, and then when the, when the wife comes under that mission or supports that mission, that is called submission, and things are powerful they work out great because they're in agreement it doesn't mean that he's greater than she is it doesn't mean that he is more spiritual or or anything like that or he has power over her or anything like that in some cases you know uh, maybe maybe the the male is not in a space to be the visionary that he should be or can be and but maybe the wife is and so she has the vision the mission for the family for the household and a husband that is uh how can i say got common sense 
and not, you know, threatened by feminine energy, <laughs> you know, he will submit, he will agree with that for the greater good of the whole family, whether he thought of it or she thought of it, it doesn't matter because it's about the mission. <laughs> it's about the mission that's going to be accomplished for that household. The same way in the spirit realm, you know, when you have spiritual leaders and when you are part of and stuff, there is a mission, there is a plan, there's a vision that is given. And when the people say, okay, I agree with that, we're going to put our energy with that, things move, things move. You, I read you the scripture, what? A couple of weeks ago, I think it was about Genesis chapter 11. The people were of one mind and one accord. And God says, there's nothing that can stop these people from doing, doing what they want to do. They're good. They can accomplish anything because, you know, they all have this one goal. Okay, that's uh, the mission there. All right. That's what submission means. That's what I mean by it. That's why it's a good thing in your household. And it's a good thing that people know who they are and that men... <laughs> Brothers, 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 tap into that masculine energy and be the man, be the man, and <laughs> not just wearing the pants and not just, you know, but doing the things that uh, we need to do for the family, okay, to make everything move uh, well. And those that don't have that in their life is okay because your husband is God, okay, and the crisis within you that is giving you the wisdom to function or vice versa if you don't have a wife or whatever like that. You understand what I'm saying? So now the number 13, 13 is a bad rap. I think I'm not for sure if it's just in this country, but I believe it is mostly in most countries around the world. You find that uh, there's no 13th floor, okay? There's no 13th floor because of the negative implications. But I wanna tell you about the positive side of it first. 13 on the positive side, it represents mastery. You find, for example, like uh, Yeshua had 12 disciples, he being the 13, he was the master, okay? And those 12 represent going through these 12 phases. It's almost like the 12 signs of the zodiac. You can look at it that way. You can look at it at the 12 uh, levels of consciousness that brings you into the 13th, which is, which is mastery. You'll find that on the dark side, the evil side, that the quote unquote Illuminati, they use the same concept. You know, there is the, thir the, the 13 families that control and rule everything because they understand the frequency, the power, and the energy of 13 representing mastery, okay? It also represents being able to tap into that, uh, that I like to use the word occult power, and you guys know what I'm talking about. I'm not talking about some, you know, crazy satanic stuff, but I'm talking about the hidden power that is within you, you know, and that causes you to master what? Yourself. If you can't master yourself, if you can't master your tongue, if you can't master your emotions and your anger, uh, if you can't master uh, the, the the need to, to constantly eat or whatever, you know, all of these other base things. How can we master in the in the spiritual room? How can we, when I say master, how can we teach others? How can we become that teacher or that master in that sense? And when I say master in that sense, I'm not talking about just anybody just teach them to about having the ability to really impart into someone's life based on your wisdom, knowledge, and personal experience and encounters. See, because we have a lot of people that maybe can teach and which is great and that is wonderful. But when you have had encounters and experience, you're no longer teaching from a textbook. Uh, you're no longer teaching from something you learn at a school or a seminary, but you're teaching from spirit. You're teaching from uh, the experience. You're teaching from, you know, a, 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 a higher space. And because you're teaching from that space, it, it is resonating within the hearts and the minds of the people and something is happening. So they're growing. All right. And I'm hope, hoping that that's what is happening on this platform here. Okay, <laughs> otherwise we just pack up and go home. <laughs> Jermo says, okay, it is, all right. Okay, I'll just believe Jeremiah, he says it's happening, okay. All right, so, so it represents mastery, mastery of this power. Now on the negative set of 13, it represents to rebel. You find in Genesis chapter 14, you find that there was a king called Tel de Lemir. And so it says that they served him for, for, for 12 years and in the 13 years, they rebel. 
And so that's the first time you find that word there. So 13 is associated with rebellion. Now the scripture says that, um, how, how does it say? Rebellion is as the sin of what? Witchcraft, okay? And so we find that hidden in that 13 on the negative side, it represents witchcraft, okay? Now witchcraft doesn't necessarily mean that you're out in the woods and that you are, uh, you got a pot and you're playing with the, uh, playing with the, what are those things in the ground, those moles? and stuff like Kelly. No. <laughs> Talking to the mo I'm joking. <laughs> you're not, you're not. And so, but but it means like, you know, and she's laughing, okay. It means it means that see, see, uh, the uh, quote unquote church is filled with witchcraft. <laughs> People that like to manipulate, that like to control, people that 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 don't listen, that that are very rebellious, you know. And so the, the negative side of this is basically uh, people that want to be in control and manipulating. That is, you find the scripture speaks about Jezebel and her witchcrafts and stuff, and it speaks about she was this master manipula manipulator, you know. And so, so that's the negative side of the number uh, thirteen there that manifests as rebellion, manipulation, and pride, all right? I think everybody got that. Now, on the positive side, as you know, was, was mastery. And then I like to go a little bit further with the 13, but three plus one is four, and that's Dalet, you know, the door that opens for you in your consciousness, that once you start to master the lower uh, urges and desires in your life that we're all yet learning how to overcome and to master. There are, there are doors that open. Lift up your head or your gaze and be lifted up you everlasting doors and the King of Glory will come in. Okay, and so we find that the King of Glory, that energy of the Christ comes in in a greater measure with kingship authority. Kingship authority, that's powerful there. All right, now, and then number 14, the number 14 is a number that represents deliverance and release, okay? You find that God told them, um, Genesis chapter, no, not Genesis, but Exodus, I believe it was Exodus 12, he told them that the first day, the, the first month, Nisan, I believe, and the 14th day, that was going to be the Passover sunset okay so 14 that number it, it, it kind of like you know when you're reading scripture and stuff there's a thing that is like kind of called like the law of first time mention you find maybe the first time maybe something is mentioned in scripture it can set a precedence for things and, and that meaning is carried right throughout especially if you're using numerology and gematria based on hebrew uh kabbalistic uh chaldean type of, of of approach and stuff it is there for example like in Genesis uh, 14, uh, you find for the very first time, there are many things that are mentioned. Melchizedek comes on the same tide that's mentioned, and uh, 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 Abraham defeats the kings, you know, uh, in the slime pit, and you find the number 318 that is there. All of these, like, little clues, very first time is mentioned there, you know, and then you find later on throughout uh, scripture, it is mentioned. And then you find, as I say, uh, 14 represented a release, it representing passing over, passing over from death to life, passing over from one level of consciousness to the next level of consciousness, entering into a whole new uh, expression. Now, the negative side or the shadow side of 14 would represent loss of life or loss of of, of things, okay? Uh, the positive side is a release of things and passing over, but the negative side will represent the loss of things, okay? So we find out what happened uh, when the death angel passed over some people, we find that some people experience loss. You see that, okay? We're talking about Gematria and understanding numer numerology, basically from the Hebraic, Chaldean, uh, and Kabbalistic understanding, I guess you could say that, because it is based on the Hebrew there. Okay, so um, let me see, I, don't, I gave you a scripture already for that. Uh, the number 15, and I'm, I'm going to only go to 20 in this because we'll be way out there in the future. We'll deal with like triple digits and other things like that. And, uh, but I'm not going to go just through every, every number, right? I'm just going to only go through 20 in this session here and uh, try to keep it like kind of a little bit short. And so now uh, number 15 in scripture uh, it represents, like, for example, if you were to look at it um, using the Hebrew alphabet, you would have the yod and the hay, the yod and the hay uh, together. That makes 15, the number 15, when you're writing it there. And so it represents a new direction. It also represents ascension. It also represents rest. 
the number 15. Now, if you were to break it down, which I'm not going to like just because see with, with gematria, numerology and stuff, you can reduce it to one digit. Okay, one plus six, one plus five is six. Okay, so that would bring us back to man or humanity. And it speaks of, you know, a new direction for humanity, a new direction for mankind and, and all of that. Uh, but it also represents here uh, ascension and ascension all right now the negative or the shadow side of 15 okay it's just the opposite it represents like confusion it represents like a sense or feeling not favored or without grace because within the 15 you have the five which represent the grace the the hay so you have the yod hay all right okay that makes that means 15 right okay now uh the number 16 okay um here uh 16 representing love okay i was if you go to like first corinthians chapter 13 you don't have to go to it right now you find that there are 16 characteristics that's listed there love is kind love does not envy it's not filled with jealousy it's not you know wishing harm for anyone you know and it goes on and on. It's about 16 different things there. And so 16 is the number that represents love, okay? It can represent other things also, but love is, is, is one of the things that it represents. Now, if you're looking at the, um, the shadow side of this, it would represent lacking love, someone that is lacking love, okay? I'm giving you both positive and shadow of uh, most of these numbers here, okay? 16. Now, uh, the number 17, okay, so again, you would have uh, the Yod and you would have the Zion, and so this is a number that represents immortality, it reduces to 8, again, the sideways 8, infinity or immortality here, and it also represents victory, it's the number in the Chaldean uh, uh, space that represents victory, it represents uh, uh, magic, or the magi, it's the number of the magi, okay, magic and power, okay, this number uh, 17 here, and you can find other scriptures that I, not, you can find that on your own throughout the scripture where the number 17 is mentioned, and uh, for example, like um, Joseph, you know, being uh, 17 years old when he had the dream, his eyes were open, the, the magi, the uh, ability to see, and the magical powers or his coat of many colors that he wore. And but because of that dream and those powers that he had, it caused him to be cast into the pit, into the dungeon, and into prison, you know. So for 13 years, 13, there it is there. Okay. And then he mastered that realm. He mastered the lower realm. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Okay, so Joseph being 17 years old, the, the, the vibration of the, the Magi of, uh, of, of victory and all of this, sharing his dreams with his brother, sharing them prematurely maybe, but it was all of God, and it getting him thrown into the pit and then into Potiphar's house and then into the prison, okay, going down, the prison was like in the dungeon, of the palace, the lower places. He was there for like 13 years through the, going through those changes. He had to master the lower realm, the lower spaces before he was raised up and called into Pharaoh's court to be second in command over the Egyptian empire. You understand that, okay? And so I'm just showing you this numerology and how it works, the star, the victory that is there. Now the negative side of this would be a lack of seeking or failure to seek, you know, your higher self or the higher state of consciousness and uh, not allowing you to walk in victory. Then 18, the number 18. Okay, now the, uh, let's see, how can I say this? Positive side of, of, of 18 can represent overcoming danger, overcoming danger. Okay, because we have like the one and the eight, this nine, okay, uh, and then we have the six, six, six that is in there, right? Okay, and so now we have this, uh, this 18 basically overcoming danger. Now, the, the negative side of the shadow side of 18 represents bondage, represents oppression. Luke chapter, I believe it's 13, it speaks about the woman that was bowed over for 18 years. 
18 years, it was very clear when it said that, that she was oppressed, that she was in bondage for 18 years. And Yeshua even says, lo, this daughter of Abraham, should not she be set free that's been bound for 18 years, you know? And then you find that number throughout scripture, like denoting oppression, uh, them uh, uh, serving for 18 years, being under bondage or things like that, okay? And so uh, it represents that. And number 19, 19 represents faith, also represents being able to hear, and that would go along with the Yod and the, uh, the Yod and the Teth, okay, again, there, okay, it's throughout here, and that speaks of like being able to listen to the spirit, listen to the serpent's wisdom, be wise as a serpent that gives faith. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. Now, uh, the negative side of the shadow set of 19 will represent people that are not able to hear, people that really don't want to hear, so their faith goes down. Well, they may come to a meeting like this, but the message and the words and all of the things that come forth on this platform goes like in one ear, it, it may be stalls somewhere in there, but then it goes right out, you know, or something like that. And so they're not producing, they are not putting into practice the things they're hearing. They are not manifesting the fruit of what they're hearing. That would be the, 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 the shadow side of it. And 20, the number 20, I'm gonna stop there. And 20 is the, represents expectation and it also represents redemption. And there are various scriptures. If you go to Strong's and look up the number 20, you will see it there. You'll find number one, that uh, that jo that J Jacob had to wait for 20 years. He was in expectation for 20 years after he left from uh, his family's house and ended up with Laban, the master con artist, right? And we find that he went through a, a, a phase of, of, of getting back, reaping what he had sown because he was the trickster, he was a con artist, right? He swindled his brother out of the birthright, then the blessing, and then he ended up with his uncle that was like, he was the OG, he was the, and he ripped him off and he ended up working for 20 years in expectation, right? And so uh, then you'll find the number 20 also represents redemption. You'll find that uh, in the old, in the Old Testament or the Torah part, you'll find that the, uh, the 20 uh, shekels of silver representing redemption money and, and all of that. So it, it ties into being redeemed, that realizing that you're bought with a price, you're not your own, okay? But it's also the expectation. Now, the shadow side of this, it represents basically, uh, I wrote down here, Jacob, uh, nothing, nothing coming to you easily nothing coming to you easy like jacob had to work very hard for 20 years all that karmic debt he had to pay off you know for for 20 years of what he had sown but he did get out of it thank god he got touched and then uh the israel was pulled out of the jacob because that was the whole purpose that there was the israel in there and uh, he had to go through all of those experiences you know the shadow side of that while expecting so that he could become the Israel, the Prince of God. All right, so I'm going to stop with that, with the numberings there, and I hope that uh, meant something to you and hope you can understand uh, numerology better. And like I said, next week, I'll probably, I think what I might do, we'll see, uh, we're going to do some numerology. We'll just have people possibly just uh, you know, think of some numbers, you know, whether it's a single digit, double digit or triple digit or anything like that. And so, and I'm going to possibly show you some things I'm hoping, like I say that, but that's the spirit is moving in that way. Right. And so, and we're going to show you uh, some things that, of how to use that as a portal to, to get prophetic messages, to do readings and to see things. Okay. So I'm going to just, um, let me just, before I uh, uh, move on here, I'm going to just just release a prayer that everything that I've spoken would be sealed within your spirit in the mighty name of Yeshua and that you would receive spiritual understanding and insight uh, into numerology and that your mind and your thinking from this night forth would be changed so when you see numbers you will no longer see them just as numbers but you will see it as energy you will see it as frequency you will see it as messages 
okay, that are waiting to be put together, messages that are sent to you when you are driving down the road and you see a big number sent out, what is the spirit saying to me? Okay, uh, there's an eight, oh wow, there's a new beginning, something is happening, something's about to happen. So you take that number and you make it yours and you turn it into a prophetic word for you, a declaration for you. And so I'm praying that this night, as of this night, that the spirit of, of, of numerology, of numbers, and that the uh, angel Raziel, which is uh, also called the angel of mysteries and numbers, would begin to come to you and manifest to you and give you meanings and give you uh, messages in the name of Yeshua. And it's so and it can't be otherwise. Hallelujah. Do you believe that? Do you believe that? If you believe that, I want you to open up your mic. I want you to clap your hand and shout amen or something. Amen. 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 All righty. All righty. Okay. So uh, before we move on, does anyone have any questions or anything? And, uh, you know, and if Pastor Dorothy is here, if somebody has a, a word for someone, it's okay. We can also use that time for that. Okay. If uh, you know, but if someone has a question, okay. I see, Gina, your hand is. Uh, you can unmute yourself. Hi, Prophet. Uh, um, I apologize about earlier. The boys were rambunctious, but when you break down numbers, do you can you also break down um, name like words and names if you count out the numbers on the alphabet, like. Um, mm -hmm. I was just thinking about when you were talking about three and then you were talking about 16 and then John three sixteen and six plus one is seven. And I was thinking about that because you were talking about love. And, but then when I broke down John, it, it, it's 10, 15, eight and 14. And when you break that down even for, further, it's one, six, eight and five. And so I was just wondering, do words, also break down the same way of course of course just as i said in the beginning that uh you know each letter of the alphabet whether in english whether it's in hebrew greek or whatever they have a numeric value and so you can you know discern the meaning through that by attaching the number to the word and so that came what was that number you just quoted that that when you put uh it says john uh, what was the numeric value of that? On 316, and the number for John is 10, 15, 8, and 14. Mm -hmm. And you add that That's up? How, I, I didn't add it up. I just broke it oh, down have, further. So I, I broke. Oh, do you add up all the numbers before you break it down then? Well, yeah, yeah, you want to you want to add it up. Well, there's not numerology that can can manifest in different ways. But I think if you if you want to add the numbers up and then you want to, uh, you know, reduce it to maybe the uh, a single digit, they call it the Pythagorean like method, uh, which goes beyond it, it, that existed before that Pythagoras. And uh, and then you can get a better understanding of the number of the meaning of that number. So you would add what john means okay at, at those which numbers. is 47 yep 47 47 okay and then 47 breaks down to 11 okay okay, okay. And then 11 breaks down to two breaks down to so, two so that would be two okay for that okay and then three and seven okay got it interesting great and you can do that with your sorry name, i didn't its name and uh, anybody's <laughs> name and stuff and, and one i think one of the i'm not for sure if i've done it here before but uh, well, I probably haven't done it here, but uh, in usually when we do school of prophecy and stuff like that, I'll show you, you know, how to uh, determine your your life number, your path life path number, and all that based on your. Uh, did I do that before here? Okay, I see Nikki is bowing her head. I guess I did that before here. We'll do it again, maybe it's because many of you probably were not here at that time, and I'll show you how to get that so that you can. Uh, do a read on your own self and and uh, understand you know who you are where you are and where your life path is going and also based on the year using the last two digits of the year like 2023 and where your life path is for that and so we'll do that maybe if not next week possibly the week after okay thank you so much for reiterating that i did not catch it thank you okay no problem 
Okay, I see Nikki, you can unmute yourself. Hi, thank you. I was gonna ask you about the life path numbers. I know mine because I've done it before, um, but I just wanted to ask, when you were talking about your address, does that include your zip code or just the street number of your house? You can just do the street number if you want and, and you can get a message from that. You can do your zip code and get a number from that also. And you can oh, because when I when I create a create a paragraph, you know, <laughs> Matter yeah. of fact, if you take the name of your street, for example, if the name of your street is like, say, Sherburn, you would do like one and then whatever number uh, S is an H and add that together. And so you're going to get some information from that also. OK, because I did it with my zip code mm -hmm. um, and it was eight, which is the new beginning. And mm -hmm. this house is a new beginning for me. Excellent. And the negative side for that was death. And my sister passed away in August mm -hmm. of last year. Mm -hmm. So, wow. okay. See, you're already doing it. You're already yeah, yeah, it. yeah. I, I learned how to do it a while ago. Excellent. I want to say it was from your class. I really do. Probably was, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yep. All right. Thank you. That's all I wanted to know. You are welcome.